Good morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us uh, on an, this month, uh, May 2021, to um, for our monthly Citizens Academy. Uh, I think we've got a little bit of light attendance today, but as we normally do, we're doing this on Facebook Live, and we'll also be doing these, uh, we'll record these so that you can catch these at a later date. But I'm super excited today because we get to talk about one of my most favorite subjects, that is parks and recreation. And Come on, it's it's so cool to have an uh, experience where we get to have fun as part of our jobs and and uh, make uh, the experience fantastic for the residents and the users of our parks and our recreation program. So super excited to be able to talk about this today, especially in the month of May coming up on Memorial Day. And we've got Lindsay and Heather join us today. So uh, actually, why don't you take both take a minute, kind of introduce yourself. Why don't you talk a little bit about who you are and, and what you do, and then I got all kinds of questions for you. I'll go first, Heather, if that's okay with you. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> so I'm Lindsay. I am the Human Resource and Payroll Coordinator, and I also help with um, parks coordinating as well. Um, I've been with the town for about five weeks now. Um, and we have a lot of exciting things going on with our parks department with Memorial Day coming up, like Doug said. So um, we're definitely, you know, focusing on our parks and getting that all set up. So we have a great season ahead of us. Awesome. Thank you. And Heather, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm Heather Polk. I've worked for the city for three years and just recently became the recreation supervisor for the town as well. Um, I'm hoping to develop a lot more recreation programs for the town and city residents so that we can continue to have a great quality of life, especially amidst the pandemic and all the things that we've been missing out on. Um, I am getting ready to open Kershaw Beach uh, Memorial Day weekend and we're prepping for camps and a couple of other mini programs like our youth arts program and um, some other fun things like Lego camp and I just got an email today about tennis starting up um, since the school facilities are being able to be used. I am a certified recreation therapist and am able to help people with disabilities be inclusive in our recreation program. So all of my planning for any programs are 100% inclusive and allow people of all abilities to come and participate. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you both. Thanks for both being here. I was hoping that um, <clears throat> we could just spend this next hour kind of digging into separately, and I'm going to ask you guys both some questions, but kind of digging into our parks programs and our town parks, and then also the recreation programs, and really the joint recreation programs and even the city parks also, because so many of our residents of our greater community take advantage of both the town and city parks. I know I do. You can find me at Onanda just as likely as you'll find me at Kershaw Park um, because it's it's just an awesome community and it's so cool that we have so many uh, opportunities in both the town and the city to uh, take advantage of those recreational and those parks opportunities. So Heather, why don't we uh, kind of start with you a little bit and talk about some of the recreation programs. So um, let's talk, so I think it was uh, three years ago, we started doing uh, more joint programs. For a long, long time, there's been a joint recreation program, but I know we have uh, the dog park that is kind of a joint venture between the town and the city. Uh, we have um, obviously the pickleball courts over at Sonnenberg that we kind of jointly did and invested in to make those available. Why don't we touch base on some of that, kind of work into the recreation programs, and then Lindsay, then we'll get into details about all of our parks. So, um, Heather, why don't, why don't we start with the dog park? Let's let everybody, let's pretend that somebody has no idea that there's a dog park available to, for the Canandaigua community residents. How is it? Where is it? How do we do it? How do we go about it? Yeah, our dog park is booming. Um, we started it uh, the year that I started, so three years ago, and then it finally was opened in November of that year. So we're going on, you know, our full third year of having this open. Um, we currently have 137 dogs registered for just this year, and it's only May. So it's definitely being used well. It's on Buffalo Street, right across from the winery, just past the railroad tracks. A lot of people miss it because it's kind of set back from the road. Um, it's a nice fenced in area. We have two um, sections for large dogs and small dogs. And for town and city residents, 
it's $30. If you are over 65 or you're a veteran and also a town or city resident, it's $25 um, plus $15 per extra dog. For everybody else, it's $30 per dog. If you're not a town or city resident, you can still register for $40 it's good for the calendar year. So that goes until December 31st of every year. It's not prorated, um, but you can find the registration forms online or come to see me here at City Hall. And once the registration form is filled out and I verify the dog's license and their rabies and their weight and everything, you get a key card that lets you in to the dog park and a collar tag, which is changing color every year to show the other users that you're registered for that current year. Um, it's self-policed, so any issues that go on at the dog park, people either have to call 911 or they call me and let me know. I'm able to run reports and see who has been in the park at what times and things like that, so I can monitor if there's people breaking the rules and stuff. Um, so we have them sign a waiver that says, you know, they understand that their membership can be revoked for rule violations. Um, I've not had to do that yet for anybody, but we do have some people who, you know, kind of use the other side or aren't cleaning up after themselves or need reminders to be polite. But for the most part, we haven't really had many issues. It's going really well. Um, we just put some stone dust in the large dog park entrance so that it's not so muddy when people go in there. Um, we're putting in a uh, shelter uh, across both sections, I think, this summer. So there'll be some shade there because we don't have any mature trees covering that area for shade. We have some benches for people to sit in. Uh, we supply dog bags for people to pick up their waste. And um, yeah, it's going really well. So for uh, for somebody maybe that, that hasn't used it, I know uh, we used it a lot last year in particular for our dogs, but there's two separate sections, one for larger dogs, one for smaller dogs, right? Yep. Um, that you can go in. And um, what's so funny to me is so many of the people get to know each other at the dog park as well as the dogs. I am put a plug in here. There's a Grandinese, her name is Stella, that absolutely loves the dog park. And she's like this huge, I mean, it's like a miniature horse. She's huge, but she's just as friendly as can be and loves the dogs, even loves the smaller dogs and stuff and just loves to run and play. And sometimes she can't get out of her own way, but still just uh, a lot of fun. That is wonderful. She actually lives on my street and they walk by my house all the time and they'll come up and funny. my dog will say hi to Stella through the fence and stuff. And my dog just goes nuts, like so excited to see her. And Stella's just like, do, do, do. I'm going to eat some right. grass and sniff over here. And she's just so cute and calm. I love Stella. Yes, she is. But it's so cool that there's that opportunity for the dogs to get out and run and kind of run together and, and meet other dogs as well as the people really, truthfully. I've, I've met so many town residents uh, over this past year at the dog park that um, people that are uh, just out, uh, whether they live at, uh, at uh, Center Point or wherever the case uh, needed a place for their dog and uh, or in a housing development where they don't have an fenced yard and they need a place for their dog. And so it's a, it's a neat opportunity there. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, we have almost 20 people who are even town or city residents that have come to sign up for it, whether they're in Bloomfield or Farmington or Shortsville, because they know that this space is available for their dog. So um, there's a lot of people using it. Awesome. And again, Heather, how do they go about getting the tags again? Let's just repeat that again. The you card. can fill out the registration form found online at canandaguanewyork.gov or you can um, come to me here at City Hall and fill out the registration form. I just need to see the dog's license um, and proof of rabies and then usually on the rabies form there's also the dog's weight so I just need to verify um, whether or not they're in the small or the large side. So okay. and then Perfect they can get the key card through me. Since COVID, I have been mailing them to people because I know that, you know, people are quarantining or they just don't feel comfortable coming in or it's just easier for them to mail it. Um, I haven't had any issues mailing them out yet. I do prefer to do them in person. I haven't had anybody lose them in the mail, but um, it's $10 to replace your key card if it is lost and it's $10 to replace the collar tag if it's lost. So people can purchase an extra key card for $10 if they'd like to have one for their spouse or somebody else. Sure. So you can go to, uh, as Heather said, uh, the city website, the town website. Um, when you go to the town website here, you can go to the government tab. Uh, there's all kinds of links here for parks and recreation. Uh, I had just opened recreation and even here's like Heather's information and stuff here, but uh, you can contact uh, them directly.
her directly uh, for that. Okay, so dog park, let's transition to pickleball. I know I've had quite a few requests from people over the years uh, to play pickleball. Uh, I think there's an organized group that may be involved one of our housing developments in, in uh, the town of Canandaigua, but um, just tell us a little bit about what's happening these days with pickleball. Pickleball is crazy booming. Um, I didn't even realize it was so popular. Uh, when I started here three years ago, the pickleball courts had already gone in and there is a small group of people. I don't know how organized they are. I know they have like an email chain and, and stuff like that. They've had people, you know, print shirts for them and stuff, but they're not like a closed group. They've always been welcoming and let me make sure that I tell people to, you know, just pop in anytime. They're typically down there in the mornings, like pretty much every day, as far as I know, and especially in the nice weather. Uh, we relined or are going to reline Baker Park to not have pickleball lines anymore, and it will just be the pickleball courts at Sonnenberg. Um, a group of them had come to me two years ago to start a pickleball tournament. So we did that for in memory of Dick Bedinas, who was a large contributor to the design of the pickleball courts and a very big advocate. And, um, you know, he's a member of the, the group that meets there often and um, a wonderful human being. So as soon as it was put together um, and completed, his family had approached me and wanting to do a tournament in his memory. So we've done that for two years. This will be our third year this fall. And it's just a great way to promote the sport. It's a great way to promote our courts. I've actually had people from Ohio come and ask if they could use the courts to have their own tournaments because they actually are very impressed with them. Their tournament size courts, which apparently is not very common for outdoor courts and municipalities. And they said that it's really difficult to see this quality of large tournament size courts that they can use to have these types of tournaments. So it's pretty cool and a kind of proud moment to know that, you know, we have that ability here um, with the eight courts that are down there. Typically they're either less courts or they're smaller sizes or they're closer together so that you can't have those types of tournaments. Um, so it got canceled last year and I haven't heard from them about doing it this year, but it's kind of a cool opportunity for residents. We have people coming from all over the place to play on our courts. And um, that tournament specifically was the winners were going to be able to go to the Arnold games in Columbus and compete in the pickleball tournaments in the Arnold games. So, I mean, just opening those doors to a huge network of people right here in Canandaigua because of our pickleball courts was something I never could have imagined. That's awesome. That is so cool. And it's, it's such a neat place uh, over near Sonnenberg Gardens, Sonnenberg Park, over near Sonnenberg Gardens. You get the old trees all along um, Howe Street there and Washington and Charlotte and that whole area. It's just a neat feel to be over to be in that area. It's a nice park. So uh, hats off. And that's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, let's shift gears for a little. Well, actually, you know what? While we're talking about parks it was in the city, let's just kind of touch on the other city parks and then let's talk about recreation and we'll talk about town parks. But so uh, we talked about the dog park. We talked about Sonnenberg. Um, Heather, you just touch base on some of the other city parks that people may or may not be aware of. Um, we have Baker. Jefferson has our skate park, which is pretty popular. Um, the, uh, Baker, uh, has, school, Baker has what? Tennis courts and it has like courts, walking paths, story basketball time. Basketball courts, soccer fields. It's got the walking path, which the Wood Library has their reading trail on, which is pretty cool. Every month they change out the book and along the trail you can stop and read each page as you walk around. Um, and then it has the playground. Sonnenberg Park also has a playground, which is more like a ninja warrior type feel. Um, and then Jefferson Park has the basketball courts, some softball fields, the, the skate park playground and the pavilion. So all those three parks all have pavilions that you can rent um, Kershaw has a number of pavilions you can rent for parties. Um, all of them are hoping to be reviewed under a master plan and looked at for um, renovations for hopefully next year. So we can have some nice amenities like the town has with, you know, beautiful buildings and 
some temperature control and nice fresh water pipes and all those nice things. Awesome. Okay. Um, and then, of course, uh, let's just touch on um, Kershaw Park, obviously Lagoon Park. I mean, everybody, I think, is pretty familiar with Kershaw Park, um, but it's it's such a cool place on the north end of the lake. I know it's one of my favorite places to go kayaking. I launched my kayak. Uh, we'll go out, obviously, Kershaw uh, Park into the lake, but also Lagoon Park and, and going back around there. It's just such a cool place. And and even uh, by the time you get to late summer, early fall, you see the lily, uh, the 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 lily, uh, the lily pads and the the flowers and stuff growing a lot in Lagoon Park. Um, it's just such a cool op, uh, cool place there and everything. Anything that we should be aware of on the horizon relating to Kershaw or to uh, Lagoon or anything? Everything, uh, anything big. Um. We just met with somebody uh, maybe two weeks ago about possibly looking into the idea of doing a, an accessible kayak launch over near the hotel there where we have um, a little dock right now. It kind of looks like a fishing dock, but it is supposed to be a kayak launch too. Um, but if we do that, it would hopefully draw some more people to that area to put their, their kayaks in the water. And not only is it completely inclusive so anybody can use it, but it would hopefully draw some traffic away from that rocky beach area or the other kayak launch um, area and allow that to be a little bit more open. People don't feel like they have to come in out of the lake with all the dogs and the kids who are in that rocky area that most people use to launch their kayaks. Mm -hmm. That would be really, really cool to have an accessible kayak launch. I'm not sure um, if too many people know what that looks like, but it's basically just a, a dock that jets out into the water with a parallel um, bar. You can slide your kayak into it and the bar, there's a bar that goes across that stops the kayak with a bar across and stairs that go down. So somebody in a wheelchair could pivot themselves into their kayak and hold onto the bar to lower themselves into their kayak and then it kind of swings out of the way and you can um, push your kayak the rest of the way into the water. So it's going to be really cool to have something like that, I think. Um, and hopefully that would bring groups down to kind of teach accessible kayaking and more promotion of inclusion. Um, but for the most part, there isn't too much that's going to change uh, at Kershaw or Lagoon specifically. That's just the one thing that we just started looking into. Awesome. Hey, let me ask you this too. Uh, I don't think we touched on the Commons Park, I think is the name of it, uh, downtown. Um, I know in the past there's been live music. Some of that stuff had to be postponed related to COVID, I think. Uh, do you know, is there anything scheduled yet? for? Um, the bid actually runs the Commons, so that's not technically through me, but she did submit some special event forms for, um, they do like a music event in June and that's kind of all around downtown Canada not just at the commons but I do believe that people who have reached out to me about renting that space and I forward them to Denise they're working on some some socially distanced activities down there um, I think it's just a matter of you know the guidelines constantly changing and you know being able to put tables or chairs to allow people to gather down there. There's just a lot of questions um, about how to do that safely. So I think she wants to, and there are some things being planned that include the commons in downtown Canada. Awesome. All right. Let's shift uh, gears a little bit. Let's talk, uh, put you on the spot, Heather. You need a break here. If you... No problem. No problem. Um, let's talk a little bit about recreation. So, um, We've had a joint recreation program between the city and the town for quite a few years, but I feel like we really, uh, this year for 2021, it's kind of, um, we've ramped it up and trying it a little bit different. So why don't you kind of walk us through what's going on with our joint recreation program this year? Yeah, um, when I started working, actually at my interview, I felt so embarrassed because I didn't realize that the town and the city were separated. And I like looked through the recreation guide, preparing myself for my interview. And I started talking about, oh, how cool is this program and that program? And then everybody was like, yeah, that's that's the town. And I was like, oh, okay, um, sure. So when I actually got hired, I actually remember meeting you for the first time when you were here having a meeting with John. And we discussed the possibility of joining recreation programs. And I was like, 
that's kind of what I thought I was doing. So I was really excited when we took this venture this year. Um, as much as I miss Sam, it's kind of cool to have it be a bridge program, basically. I mean, recreation is not one of those super political things that everybody should have to think deeply about. It's just you sign up because you see something fun and it's just the way that it is. So um, I really like the idea of having these programs be you know, offered in the town and the city so they can be in both areas. You guys have beautiful buildings and amenities. So it's so wonderful to be able to think forward into planning some events in those areas because it just draws more people. It draws more um, uh, teachers who wanna do those types of programs. Our recreation programs through the city are run by coaches and teachers and people who are basically contracted to do those types of programs. Whereas in the past you, the town had staff to run these programs. So we'll have to look at, you know, how many staff we want to type to run different programs versus how many people we want to contract for. But like you and I had discussed, you know, you guys have Crouch Hall, which has a beautiful um, commercial kitchen that's not often used. So, you know, being able to think about, oh, let's plan a cooking program for kids or some other type of program that somebody else might want to run or offer that to um, community have members who are taking people with disabilities to teach skills that they can't do in the home. They can use a kitchen like that or a space that the city might not have. Um, just having all of these amenities available open so many doors and having one person kind of run recreation through the entire 14424 area code to me makes a lot of sense and I'm just really excited to offer so much more. So yeah we're super excited and uh, Lindsay has been uh, getting up and, and um, getting going on a lot of the different things uh, involving uh, parks here over the last few weeks, but uh, this recreation program, I'm going to share the recreation guide. Heather, I mean, think about this. Let's talk about this from the perspective of uh, the mom, the dad, they've been home with the kids basically all year long. I need to get them out of the house, right? Isn't that what everybody's basically saying right now? I love them, but they got to go do something, right? So this is a great opportunity this year with the recreation program to take advantage of some new things. So can you just kind of walk us through some of this? As yeah, I mean, we have our joint program, which is our camp. And then the town offered their kitty camp or their, um, I think you called it nature nuts and some other mini camps for younger kids. So we got rid of those and then added the youth arts program, which is um, going to be run by our kitty camp staff. So that should be fun for six to 10 year olds to do some art programs three days a week. Um, and then as you're scrolling through here, we have some advertisements for local um, recreation opportunities like Finger Lakes Opera. Lego Robotics is run by one of our teachers at the school. Um, we have some really, this is new, the etiquettes class is run by Susan. Um, just, I'm, I can't wait to send my kid to that. Uh, these holistic arts is new. These are all online Zoom courses for people to register for. Um, we have the youth arts program right there, which is our kitty camp um, staff, pickleball for adults, music play for little kids, the music camp, which is really popular, football, the how cool is that, and the science um, and CSI for kids is new. Um, and then, yeah, you can just register for any of those. And then it goes into our camps, um, which it runs for six weeks, our kitty camp for three to five year olds, and then our day camp for grades one through eight. Four different locations to choose from for the day camp. And uh, that's more of a full day, 9.30, 3.30. The kitty camp from nine to 12, half day at schoolhouse on Butler Road. All right, so let's just, if we could just spend a second on kind of each of those, just kind of explain uh, to the parent that, that might be kind of wondering what this is all about or what options. Let's start with, let's say I have a four-year-old. Um, first of all, is there currently availability in the program for the kitty camp? No, every week is full right now. It wow. up really quick. Well, mainly because we have to do half capacity this year for COVID. So okay. the building holds 25 kids, so we have it to 12. If we get new guidance that says we can have, you know, 75% capacity or anything like that, then we do have some kids on the wait list who will hopefully be able to join and then have some other openings. And okay. then same with our day camp. Three out of our four locations are full almost every week. Um, 
two are full every week. One has a couple openings a few of the weeks. And then our outhouse program for the full day has um, some space available for every week. But it is filling up due to the half capacity this year. Okay, so let's go back to the four-year-old. It uh, might not be available right now, but you are keeping a wait list. So I could at least get on the wait list and let's see what happens if the guidance changes or whatever the case, right? Okay. So the day camp grades one through eight uh, that we're kind of showing here, the four locations. So let's just repeat those again, the four locations. Absolutely. We have the Outhouse Park, we have Baker Park, Sonnenberg Park, and Onanda Park. Okay. So then Heather, can you just kind of spend a second maybe on each of the locations, talk about kind of what would happen during the course of the day? I don't, is there a page I should flip to on the... I have a generic thing here, unfortunately. I... Um, We'll put more on the city website once our guidance is cleared through the Department of Health. Typically, in previous years, we go on field trips every Tuesday. Due to COVID, we're not supposed to be going on field trips, but I do have um, submitted to the Department of Health three days that the parks will visit Kershaw, and if they allow that, that the parents would drop off and pick up on that location, and we would have separate entrance, separate bathroom, and all these other regulations to hopefully let them allow us to do that. Um, and then we're also hoping to do a trip to parents would drop off at the bowling alley and pick up at the movie theater. But typically, um, Onanda Camp is very popular because the kids have the option to swim every day with the beach right there. The other three camp locations, they'll spend the other days um, on location and they'll do a variety of activities. We bought each camp a large tarp to use as a slip and slide. They play different water games like drip, drip, drop, which is a variation of duck, duck, goose, where you dump water on people's heads. And they do, you know, all sorts of group games, kickball, stuff like that, craft activities. Um, we're theming each week this year. So that will go in the calendar that I update on the website. Um, and that will change. Um, each week for each camp, they are coming up with their own. And so the games and activities will kind of be themed and based around whatever it is. We'll have the firefighters come visit. We're going to have scoops come visit. We're going to have laser tag set up. And, you know, all these places obviously have their own regulations for following guidelines and distancing and um, all that stuff. So it's still going to be a lot of fun this year. I literally only ran camp last year because I had a seven-year-old who needed to get out of the house and socialize. I was literally watching him regress socially and like not be able to carry on a conversation or have proper manners or anything. And I was like, please go practice these skills around kids and be outside and get off your tablet and stop, you know, just moping or whining or whatever it is. I don't think I would have ran camp last year if it wasn't for Carter. So everybody who came to camp last year can thank my kid because it would have been so easy for me to, I had just had a baby in April and it would have been so easy just been like, oh, well, it's hard. The regulations are too strict. Let's just not do camp. And I was so dedicated and determined to try and do something that we did it. And I think this year it's going to be smoother because I know what the regulations are like and I know, you know, how to push the limit a little bit and interpret the regulations and then they'll change on me and we'll do it all over again. Right. right. <laughs> but, it should be a lot of fun, even if it's smaller. And I hope that they change it so that we can have more kids come. Well, and as you mentioned, um, this is new this year where we're doing it jointly and using both town and city facilities. And I think as we are continue to make improvements in our facilities, uh, hopefully that'll provide more options for the recreation program also as we're continuing to do things. Speaking of facilities, let's talk about Town of Canandaigua Parks. It is by far and away it seriously is my favorite thing. I love our parks. Uh, so excited about our parks. Our parks are so cool. I love that we have been able to continually invest in our parks and expand our parks and uh, and really offer new amenities and new exciting. All right, Lindsay, we got all kinds of parks to talk about, but Heather was talking about Outhouse Park. Let's start there and I'm going to pull it up. Let's do the big reveal. I'm so excited. Let's do it here live right now. Let's talk about Pirate Ship Park and an additional Pirate Ship at Pirate Ship Park. Oh, we are so excited. We had the opportunity to purchase a second playground um, for Outhouse Park. So if you haven't been there before, um, we already have a Pirate Ship Park there. Um, and now we're going to have a second one. So that way, and Doug, I know it was your vision for the kids to be playing back and forth on the pirate ship part or pirate ships um, themselves. So 
additionally, here it is. This is what we just ordered and it will be installed um, by the end of this year. So be on the lookout for that. We'll be updating our websites with a date of um, when it's gonna be installed and ready to use, but it's something that we are so excited about. Lindsay, we have this I can't thing. wait to get on it with you and we're <laughs> gonna do a big ribbon cutting, have all kinds of kids and stuff. I mean, it's what, three additional slides in addition to the pirate ship that we already have there. Um, obviously you see like the pirate flags and stuff, the kind of the ship stuff. Plus I think it's got the spider web. It's got a little bit of like climbing stuff. Um, and it's, it's, it's just so cool. I am so excited about it. So. And one other thing too, Doug, that I want to mention about this, um, this particular playground, um, we actually have a lot of additional lower places for younger kids to play. So, um, it'll be geared towards all different types of ages. So if you have younger children, they'll be able to play on the ground and um, crawl through a lot of things. So that was something that we were very excited about. Awesome. Um, all right, I'm gonna stop sharing that for a quick second. Lindsay, um, what, let's just kind of go, we have uh, nine parks, I think in total, if I did that right. Let's just kind of <laughs> walk through all of them. Um, and why don't you keep going with Outhouse Park? Okay, so Outhouse Park, again, currently has the Pirate Ship Playground, which is super popular for our residents. Um, but we also have a basketball court, um, I believe bocce ball, if I'm not mistaken, Doug, is that correct? Yep. And then we also have an outdoor pavilion and an indoor facility that can be rented um, through our new parks reservation system, which can be found on our Town of Canandaigua website under Quick Links under facility reservations where you can easily make reservations for those two things. So the indoor hall, it has an indoor bathroom, it is heated, um, it's got a sink, so you can have all your indoor fun events, um, but you also have that option to rent the pavilion that is outdoors. And we also have restroom facilities right next to our playground for the convenience of the parents. Um, we also have a lot of playing fields, um, so you know we have some organizations that play soccer, lacrosse, um, and utilize our fields. So that park is, I would say, one of our popular ones um, within the town and the city. So let's also talk about, uh, so we've got uh, Lodge 100, Building 100 mm -hmm. there, which is a full-fledged building, includes like a small like kitchenette. Uh, I want to have a baby shower. I want to have a, uh, I want to have a reception. I can do it there, right? Yes, you sure can. Um, and plus, we've also got uh, building four, uh, 300, I think, is a pavilion. Um, you mentioned the, our, uh, the basketball courts there and everything. Plus, there's a trail uh, that kind of goes around uh, Outhouse Park. Um, and so it's, it's just a really, it's a, it's a neat facility. It's a, it's a really neat facility. Terry, thanks for joining us. I know you were having trouble yeah. with the login, but thanks for joining us. So. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll clean the blackboard and get the erasers at the end of the meeting so perfect perfect you were late to class yes you were yeah. late to class, so um all right so we're just talking about outhouse park um lindsay uh should we go walk across the street uh on oh our i i would tour? love to walk across the street right. um this is a very emotional project i think for a lot of people um <laughs> like i said in the beginning i've only been with the town for a little over a month and this project is just something that absolutely incredible and is going to impact so many different lives. Um, so this is our all-inclusive playground that is going to be across the street from Outhouse Park and this is geared towards people of all abilities. Um, as you can see in the diagram there it's it's going to be probably the most amazing park in the area. Um, Doug it is been it's the first certified is it the first certified all-inclusive playground in the United States? Yes, it'll be the very first certified playground for um, inclusion design in the entire United States of America. Numero uno in the town of Canada, right here in our community. So. And this is gonna, like I said before, this is gonna impact so many different people um, of all ages and all abilities. Um, this will be the place where a lot of people are gonna come, you know, from all over, not just in the Canada area, so it's something that I think everybody in our surrounding areas and even neighboring states are going to come and see. So we just did our groundbreaking. Um, was it a week ago already? No um, so that's it, it, it's incredibly exciting. I know the parts for the playground have been ordered. So 
we are well on our way to making this dream come true for for a lot of people. It, so cool, I love it. Yeah, it, it really is so cool. And uh, the, you have to uh, big, give a big thanks. I'm gonna put a plug in here for Kiwanis uh, in Canada and both Kiwanis and Rotary. I was doing a presentation at Kiwanis recently on this, but uh, they have done a uh, phenomenal job in raising money uh, for this uh, playground. Uh, the not-for-profit group uh, Inclusion in Motion Think Big uh, that was formed by uh, Mike Bentley. Um, and I know you've seen a lot of the stuff here uh, locally uh, with the Bentleys talking about MJ and their passion and their desire to bring this to our community. But uh, they've really been leading the forefront and uh, incredibly they've raised um, almost $700,000 uh, for the construction of this playground. Uh, the town of Canandaigua is providing essentially the land and all the surface and below work, uh, providing the labor. Uh, so there's a substantial investment from the town of Canandaigua as well, but uh, the group has raised all of the money for all of the equipment, uh, as well as a, a really neat building that's going to be there in uh, a variety of state-of-the-art aspects with it. So it's it's just so cool. It's it's right there. Um, let me just back up here for a quick second. Um, Lindsay, we were talking about uh, Outhouse West. I, I forgot I had some photos <laughs> here on my other screen so we could talk, about, or I'm sorry, just Outhouse Park. Um, we have the pavilion, obviously the lodge there. Uh, the first pirate ship that we were talking about that's already there, we're adding the second pirate ship that we talked about. And um, this is also where we did some cool things uh, just over a year ago now, right before COVID. Uh, we had a movie night in Outhouse Park and we were able to bring in bounce houses and food trucks and all those types of things. And I'm really hoping that we can do that again. Uh, we had about 800 people attend that event. It was a fantastic event for us. Um, and so I, I'm really looking forward to when we can start doing those types of things again. So. All right, Lindsay, what park do you want to talk about next? Uh, how about uh, Pierce Park? I've got that. I've got a little screen slide. There. Yeah, that sounds great. So um, we also have Pierce Park. It's a, you know, smaller in comparison to Outhouse Park, but it still has has a wonderful playground um, that kids can play on. We also have pavilions that can be rented for any of your outdoor parties, graduations, um, you know, birthday parties for kids. There's also a small baseball diamond on the property. Um, and it's really nice. There's also bathroom, restroom facilities as well. So um, again, it's one of our nice parks that you can take the opportunity to, um, to rent. And then we got McJanet Park. So this park is a very tranquil um, piece of property that we have that overlooks the lake. It's gorgeous. Um, it's great just to stop by. It's more of like an overlook area with some grass, picnic tables. So, you know, if you're just Sunday cruising, you know, stop over at McJanet Park, have a little bit of lunch or something to eat with, um, you know, with a friend, but it, it, it's gorgeous. And then this is Old Brookside, um, which I'm not super familiar with, Doug, so if you could help me out here. I think this is in one of our developments, if I'm not mistaken. It is. It's it's a pretty neat. A lot of times it gets overlooked. It's, it's very close to Outhouse Park, but this is officially a town park uh, that is in the Old Brookside housing development. It uh, is a smaller park, but it does have a open area for recreation, um, kind of some fields and everything there uh, in between uh, in the center section. It's, it's almost like the housing development was built around the park, uh, essentially. And then there's some uh, pretty neat open space associated with that, trails that actually come over to the town hall property and will eventually link to Outhouse Park. Uh, actually, they link to Outhouse Park now. Uh, but then also to the Auburn Trail, which we can talk about in a little bit. But why don't you uh, keep going there, Lindsay? Okay, so we got Schoolhouse or Butler Beach. It's called by many names. Um, I also feel like this is one of the beaches. It, it's a hidden gem. Um, it's got the nice lakefront and it's good for, for our swimmers. So a lot of people take advantage of this um, over summer. It does open mid-June, around June 18th. Again, those hours are going to be posted on our site. Um, and then it's, it's open through August. Um, this is also where Heather does some of her um, summer camp programs as well, like you said, Heather at Schoolhouse. Um, but no, it's a great part to bring, to just bring whatever you need, bring a blanket. You know, we have some chairs there too. It's great swimming and a fantastic location. Oh, Blue Heron Park. So this is probably one of my favorite parks. So this is right off of um, 332, right behind um, the town of Canandaigua Fire Department. 
Um, it's got walking trails. There's a pond there. There's also a pavilion that you're able to run out to for any of your parties. Um, and we also have disc. It's disc golf. I think that's the, the word for it, right? Yep. Um, which is, you know, pretty popular as well. So it's, it's definitely, again, it's one of our hidden gems in one of our nine parks. And I would highly recommend anyone who is just looking to get outdoors, use a walking path um, to check out Blue Heron Park. Okay, now we're on to Miller Park. So for anyone who loves bird watching, this is like the bird watching destination in the town of Canandaigua. We have had many people from across the country come here to check out all these unique type of birds that we have um, that we weren't even aware of were nesting in here. So this is one of the best places to go in Canandaigua to bird watch is Miller Park. We have a lot of trails that are kept up on um, and we keep the habitat nice for, um, for the birds. And this is this really interestingly enough. I've I've been amazed and and really watch the progress of this park. Um, when I became the town manager, this was designated as parkland, but there was nothing there. You couldn't even access the property. Um, and uh, we have done so much, and this is our newest park. But this park is so cool. It tells there's so many different stories at Miller Park. You can go and just take your dog for a walk. Uh, dogs are welcome on a leash, clean up after them, please. And there are dog stations there. Um, you can go and take the dog for a walk or you yourself can go for a walk along the trails that Lindsay was talking about. Um, the Miller, it's dedic It's basically, it's named after the Miller farm, which used to, uh, the Miller family, which used to farm the land. There's a story there about the Miller family and even one of the plows that used to plow that's actually right there uh, on the property you see in the photo. But this park also, in addition to the trails, you were talking about the birds and the butterflies and, and those types of wildlife habitat, which are so cool. Plus there's deer, plus there's other animals, but there's also a gazebo at the top of the hill. You hike up to the gazebo, go up and watch the sunrise, go up and watch, or the sunset, I'm sorry. And you can look to the north, west and you can see the Rochester skyline. You can make out the Rochester skyline on a clear day because of its elevation. You can also see City Hall and the courthouse, as well as the BEA from the gazebo, all because of its elevation. You really get a neat, ideal view there. Uh, we've planted, I want to say, close to 100 different species of trees at Miller Park. This was <laughs> previously open farm field. And uh, you can learn about the trees. Uh, you see one of the signs in the lower right corner here on the screen. It tells all about the species of the trees, and you can go learn about that as you walk around the park. You can also learn about the wildlife. Uh, it's a very interpretive park. Um, and we're also working on additional signage for Miller Park um, uh, for um, telling the story of agriculture in the town of Canandaigua and everything the town of Canandaigua is doing to protect agriculture. And so those additional signs are uh, in process now. So just a super, super cool uh, park. Um, if, uh, you know, Peter Blackwood is a, a local photographer that a lot of people know and, and they've seen stuff and I, I wish I'd pull it up and I got to ask P Peter permission to use it, but uh, Peter just recently did a photo shoot one night out at uh, Miller Park after uh, reaching out to me and it was, uh, it's, it's just incredible. The stars, you can see the Milky Way, it's just absolutely incredible. <laughs> that he captured at Miller Park. And I know he's um, actually got some of his photos for sale in some of his downtown uh, locations and stuff, uh, photos of Miller Park, but super, super cool. So Miller Park is uh, definitely, I keep hearing from more and more people that it's becoming one of their, their favorites. We have so many favorite parks, it's incredible. So, <laughs> we do. <laughs> We're very fortunate, I feel like. Right. Oh, we so are. There's one more we should probably touch on. Oh, maybe, maybe. Um, I have to say this, this has become my favorite park um, that we have. Maybe I'm biased though. So, <laughs> so this is Onanda Park. Um, it is a lakeside park, but we are also fortunate to have what we call the uplands where there are hiking trails. So I wanna touch base first on lakeside. So we have lakeside cabins that you can rent, again, by going to our Town of Canandaigua website under Quick Link Facility Reservation. This is a new system that we rolled out um, for the convenience of our residents and also people from out of state who want to rent um, our facilities. So it's super user friendly. It shows you a beautiful map of the site. It goes through all our lakeside cabins, the pavilions that we have. 
Um, Heather, you mentioned too, we, we do have Forum Hall, which has a full industrial kitchen where you can hold large events. We also have Crouch Hall that um, it's, it's another indoor space that you can hold awesome events at too. So this is one of our lakeside cabins and um, it sleeps four. It's got great views of the lake. Um, it, it, it's amazing. We also recently installed brand new grills around the site. So um, I just checked out those. Some of them haven't even been used yet. So this season is going to be going to be great for a lot of our residents. Renting. You know, something else we just recently installed that a lot of people don't probably even realize that that I notice here in the thing. I had a uh, somebody who was actually using one of our cabins came to me late in uh, 2019 and said, you know, it's it's difficult to even just warm something up staying in the cabin. Is there any chance that you would think about putting in microwaves? Truthfully, we we went and bought microwaves for every single cabin. We installed them in the fall of 19 into early 20, but because of COVID, almost all of them are brand new and still have never been used and they're there in all the cabins. But every single cabin now has a microwave in it. Which is super convenient. And um, one thing that I love about this job too is just the resident feedback and then how we can act on that feedback, which is something I think is pretty cool that we have the ability to do. So yes, yeah, so those are some of our lakeside cabins. They're so cute, they're rustic. Um, I'm not sure if some of our residents know, but it used to be an old, um, well, it's not just a YMCA camp, it was the women's YMCA camp, correct Doug? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So very, very cool. There's a lot of history here um, with our buildings. And I think that's what makes it so charming down there is because we've kept it so rustic and original. So when you go down there, you know, you feel like you're part of the outdoors, but still, you know, in the modern world, which is, which is really nice. Um, we also have an awesome, like, yep, Crouch Hall. Um, it's heated facility. It's, it's huge. And right next to it is also a little playground. Um, I shouldn't say little because it's not very little. We do have, um, it's pretty large. I think we're still uh, in the process, it looks like, of uploading everything. This is a brand new reservation <laughs> system. <laughs> actually, <laughs> just touch on, it's, it's uh, actually just launched, but um, a brand new <clears throat> reservation system so that you can go online. What I'm, I'm super excited about this reservation system, it, it's going to make it, I think, so much more user-friendly for people to be able to rent, but it also links with like VBRO or VRBO and Airbnb. So that uh, if there is availability and you're searching for something, it'll pop up on those sites also. And um, I, I, it's my understanding that we're getting an incredible number of reservations every single day. Uh, that is correct, Doug. A lot of people are definitely using it. So it is user-friendly. One thing I wanted to mention too, though, if anyone is having issues or has questions about the reservation system, please give us a call here at Town Hall. Um, our town clerk's office is more than happy to answer questions, walk you through it, or help you over the phone with anything that you need. So you mentioned the playground here next to Crouch, and I know I'm using this map here. I'll just <laughs> zoom in on this a little bit. But, uh, you mentioned the playground, obviously, uh, the basketball court, tennis court, volleyball. Uh, Lindsay, why don't you? Oh, yes. <laughs> so this is one of our bigger projects that we've been working on. This used to be the old Nature Nuts um, building and offices. We recently turned it into a recreation room. So we have pool tables, ping pong tables, air hockey. We're going to have a toddler section so that way younger children can play. Um, and it, it's just going to be in an awesome recreation room for our residents that come down to the park to use, you know, whether it's a rainy day or you have some friends and you want to just play a casual game of pool. Um, and it's something that we are so excited about for, you know, to have as an addition to our, our, our park down at Onanda. I'm thrilled about it. I know Doug, you are too. <laughs> Can't wait to play some pool. <laughs> I, I love this picture here on our website. Sarah took this for us a year or two ago. And of course it just changed on me. Let me switch it back. But uh, uh, this is a, a view of Onanda Park from the lake uh, that Sarah Reynolds in our, in our office here took. And you see a lot of the things Lindsay's talking about. That's the game room right here in the center. Obviously the swimming area, you've got Crouch Hall back up in here. You've got Gorham Lodge. You've got all those lakeside cabins and everything there uh, on both sides. But um, just a, a neat, um, it really is, a, in, in, it's a one-of-a-kind treasure. It really is. And we're continuing to make improvements. 
uh, in the facilities, continuing to make them uh, more friendly for, um, there's Miller Park, by the way, too, but the website changes that. So I'm going to jump back over the map. Um, but the, um, <clears throat> the um, we continue to make improvements uh, really with Onanda in redoing different things. The recreation program, um, we run that out of the, is it the Arts and Crafts building, Heather? Yeah. Okay. So the recreation program is run out of there. And then obviously we have all the other things. What, um, Lindsay, can you talk a little bit about kind of the operations of Onanda this summer? What we're going to expect? Uh, lifeguards, when does the beach open? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we we are opening our beaches up on the Friday, I believe it's May 28th. So Memorial Day weekend is our opening weekend. And our beach hours are going to be from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, and that could change throughout, throughout the summer, too, depending on how busy we are. But what you can expect from us is a very smooth experience from the time that you come in until the time that you leave. Um, we're going to have our gatehouse attendants available right at the opening part of the park. Um, there is a small fee for parking um, if you park lakeside. If you park on the uplands, um, that parking is free. And when I say a small fee um, for the weekday, it's $5. A weekend or holiday, it's $7 to park down there. If you're just walking in, it's just a dollar um, a person, whether you're a resident or non-resident. Um, and then we also have our rangers who are going to be patrolling the park um, just to make sure that everyone is having a great time and that everyone is safe. So right, they'll Lindsay, view I have a question. Oh, yeah. Let me yeah, ask you a course. question, right? Yeah. All right. So I've heard this so many times over the years, but I am coming down. I'm, you know, I don't carry cash with me. I usually, I'm one of those people. I may have a dollar. I may have $2 and I drive down the lake. I've got everything. I'm ready for my picnic. I pull in the park and I hear parking is $5 or $7 or whatever it is. And I only have $2 cash in my pocket. And what am I going to do? Am I going to turn around and go somewhere else? What am I going to do now? Well, let me tell you, Doug, you are able to use a credit card. <laughs> this year, you are able to use a credit card right at the park. So along with our new reservation system has brought some modern things to Onanda itself, which means we can also take credit cards this year. So um, we recognize that a lot of people don't carry cash, and we want to make sure that any resident that is coming in has the ability to use our parks if they want to. So yes, you can use a credit card. Wow, welcome to 2021. I know. <laughs> I have a question too, actually. Um, we just started using credit card system two years ago at Kershaw and it's like life-changing. Um, yeah. But So I get tons of people who call me asking to rent facilities at the town. So typically I just give them Lindsay's phone number. Is there a different thing that I should be directing them to, to rent stuff? Should I direct them to this website? What yes. is the website? Yes. Is there is site.com or do we, I direct them to the town website and then they book from there. So I think it would be, it's a more fluid experience, I think, to go through our town website and then go to the Quick Links facility reservations and it takes you directly to that site. Now, if they have questions on how to use it or, um, you know, it's just something that's unfamiliar to them, they can absolutely call the town clerk's office and they will walk them through the process. And either way, they will, they will help them with the online process or take care of them right there. Cool. Good to know. I will direct yeah. them to your website. Then. Yeah, it's awesome. And it gives them the ability to, I think, just to have that visibility of the map is huge. You know, if you're looking for a cabin, but you're not familiar with Onanda, there it is. There's the map for you. If you want a cabin that's closer to the lake, a little bit further, it gives you that ability to, to look at that because we also have the uplands opened up this year as well. So we do have cabins on the upper side of the lake that has, you know, you can see the lake, but it's, it's not obviously lakeside. One of the things I'm just noticing here, Lindsay, and maybe an yeah. uh, opportunity for us to kind of work on is um, we had, uh, I'm just kind of looking here real quickly, our, yeah, it's still on our website. There's a lot of information about all of our parks on our website, including Onanda and the various cabins that you see, the lodges, the pavilions. Um, we had a lot of interior photos that I see is not necessarily showing up on the the site through the reservation but you can look here i mean king hall for instance is a gorgeous awesome. facility. it's gorgeous it's absolutely beautiful and you can really see what's what's available there and and what's not by going to the website and, and really digging into it has an incredible view and there's an incredible deck uh but it's like it's a great facility for hosting a party i don't know what it um 
oh, capacity 50 people approximately. So it's not a huge facility, but it is an absolutely gorgeous facility. So that, that stuff is available all on the website. And as you said, you just go to that facility rental reservation uh, tab and it'll take you right over here, including for all the upland stuff. I also wanted to touch base really quick too on the gorgeous trails that we have on the upland. So um, we have hiking trails and based on a lot of feedback that we have, we are making um, some improvements on our trails. So that way they are clearly marked for people. So that way you don't get lost. Um, but there's some amazing overlook areas, you know, at certain times of the year, you can see a nice little waterfall. Um, it, it's definitely a place that I would recommend our residents checking out when they are in the town of Canandaigua hiking those trails. It's, it's hard to know where to be excited. I mean, we've got the new <laughs> pirate ship at uh, Pirate Ship Park, the Al Richard P. Outhouse uh, Memorial Park. We've got the new inclusive playground. We've got all the improvements we're doing at Onanda. I know we're doing some uh, smaller improvements at Butler Road Beach Schoolhouse. We've got Miller Park, which is, or I'm sorry, we've got um, Blue Heron Park, which is slated for improvements this year. And we continue to invest and make modifications in Miller Park. So it's like, it's like super fun, super cool. So fun. I love it. <laughs> so, all right, Lindsay. Well, thank you so much, Lindsay and Heather. But thank you both for sharing all the information. I'm so excited. Memorial Day is just around the corner. We're ready for some nice warm weather. If you do happen to go out to Miller Park over the next couple of weeks, take a pair of boots or, or something with you because it just the topography, unfortunately, it is very muddy, but it'll dry out very soon and then get up there and hike up to that uh, gazebo up on the top. I didn't mention the Auburn Trail. We continue to work on that. Terry's working on that with the Public Works Committee. That'll link um, the Auburn Trail is so cool because it links Victor and Farmington with the, the Auburn Trail through the town of Canandaigua to Outhouse Park, which then connects obviously the city sidewalk system. And there's a spur to actually come through the city and connect to the Ontario Pathway Park. And then also connects to the Finger Lakes Trail, which goes all the way to Buffalo. So it's so cool. I mean, it's, there's so many neat things happening. So a lot of cool stuff. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for sharing so much information. Look forward to a fantastic summer this summer in our parks and our recreation programs. Thank you, Heather, for sharing all the information. Super excited. And it's so cool to hear that the programs are almost sold out already. I mean, it's cool and it's good and it's not. That, yeah. uh, I mean, it's nice to know that we have this available. I have so many people who are like, oh my gosh, my kid has never been to camp before, but they did virtual school all year. I can't wait to get them out and around other kids. And I just love connecting with the parents and knowing that we're providing this for them and how many kids need it, like need it. Right. It's just great. So I'm super excited. <clears throat> Yeah. Well, and it's good, too, that you've got a wait list going. So if some of the restrictions ease and we can accept more uh, students or more kids that you can do that, but uh, people can reach out to you to get on the wait list. There. I feel like we would still be full, even if we were at full capacity right now because of how long the wait lists are. So. You would. <laughs> you would definitely. I mean, we could probably open another location and have like a whole nother camp because it's just crazy how many people are excited for camp. Um, a lot of them, you know, the longest wait list being at Onanda because they just know how popular it is and people sign up like as soon as it opens. I think it only took like two weeks to fill up Onanda after we opened registration March 1st. It was just crazy. That's awesome. That is so cool. Well, we can talk. We can always look at maybe expanding or something. So. We're going to have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Thanks for taking the time to join us today. Thanks. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. You too. Goodbye.